Your mask and Galarian your mask feature in the next research day in Pokemon Go and in this video I will be going through all of the details and tips to help you make the most of it. So the event takes place on Saturday October 19th between 2pm and 5pm local time. You will be able to receive event themed field research from spinning Pokestops and from these you will be able to encounter your mask and Galarian your mask which will both have boosted shiny rates of 1 in 10 during this event. And if possible I do recommend playing this and any research day in an area where there are a lot of Pokestops because you do only get one research task per Pokestop per day. So if you want more shiny chances, then you need to spin as many different Pokestops as you can. And your mask and Galarian your mask aren't the only Pokemon to feature during this event. In the wild, you will be able to encounter Cubone, Zigzagoon, Galarian Zigzagoon, Duskull, and Shieldon. These Pokemon, though, unfortunately won't have boosted shiny rates like both your mask will. For the raids, in five star raids will be Origin Form Giratina, and in Mega Raids will be Mega Sableye. And for the max battles, in one star max battles, Battles will be Max Grookey, Score Bunny, and Sobble, and in three star max battles will be Max Phalanx. I will be going through how good each of the event Pokemon are later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. There will also be an optional timed research for $2 that will challenge you to complete field research tasks, and this will allow you to encounter more Yamask and Galarian Yamask. And the Yamask that you encounter from this timed research will have the same boosted shiny rates. There will also be new avatar items featured in the shop from October 14th Lucario Mask, Solgaleo Mask, Yamask Mask. Pikachu and Eevee Festival Mask, Pikachu Mask, Sableye Mask, and Bennett Mask. And when it comes to all of the Pokemon featured for the event, which are worth focusing on the most? So starting with the Yanova Yamask, its evolution Kofagrigus does see some play in Go Battle League. It is ranked 143 in the Great League with 0 11 14 IVs, and it's ranked 114 in the Ultra League with 10 15 15 IVs. So it's not massively relevant, it is more of a spice pick. However, the Galarian Yamask, which evolves into Runarigus, has more relevance in Go Battle Battle League. Runarigus is ranked 87 in the Great League with 0 11 14 IVs and it's ranked 54 in the Ultra League with 10 15 15 IVs. And with the 10 10 10 IV floor of research, the IVs will be more suitable for an Ultra League Runarigus. However, you could always mirror trade some of your Galarian Yamask to attempt to re-roll your attack IV lower. So out of the two, Galarian Yamask and Runarigus are more worth investing in. However, evolving Galarian Yamask into Runarigus is quite a bit more difficult than evolving its Unova counterpart into Coffee. Egregious. This is because as well as 50 candy, you do need to make Galarian your mask your buddy and win 10 raids to be able to evolve it. For those of you who pay for raid passes regularly, this won't be too much of a challenge and with raid hours and remote raids, it can be done pretty quickly. However, for those of you that are free to play players, a good way to get this done is on a raid day because with the five free raid passes you get and the daily free raid pass, you can make some good progress on this. And when it comes to the wild spawns, we do have Cubone in the wild and this is another great encounter for Go Battle League where Marowak is ranked 30 one in the Great League with 0 14 14 IVs and it is ranked even higher at 14 as a shadow so generally well worth catching Cubone because it is quite a rare Pokemon and not often featured in events. It's also worth noting that Alolan Marowak is ranked 62 in the Great League and 43 as a shadow again with 0 14 14 IVs so if you do have any Alolan Marowak that need powering up this will be a good chance to get some candy for that. Duskull will also be available in the wild and well worth picking up because Dusk Noir is ranked one of the highest in the Ultra League where it is ranked 12 with 0 15 15 IVs and it's ranked even higher at rank 8 as a shadow. And Shadow Duskull and Dusclops are both currently available from the Ghost type Rocket Grunt so a good time to pick them up and get Shadow Dusk more while you can. And with Duskull being in the wild this will be a great time to get some candy to power up Dusk more or its shadow version for the Ultra League. If you want to know what other shadow Pokemon are currently available from Team Rocket after the recent takeover and which ones are most worth targeting then I recommend checking out this video where I go through each of these and I will have it linked in the description as well if you're looking for that information. And lastly for the wild Pokemon we do have Shield on available and this will be a great time to get a Bastion on for Great League where it is ranked 17 with 0 15 14 IVs. Moving on to the raids, Origin Form Giratina is worth raiding because it is the 10th best ghost type attacker and it's ranked 23 in the Master League. And in its altered form it is ranked even higher in the Master League at rank 13 and it's ranked 4 in the Ultra League with 1 12 15 IVs. And despite the altered form not being available in raids currently, the candy that you get from Giratina Origin raids can also be used to power up an altered form Giratina if you have any. And as there will be more people out playing on this day because it is a research day that requires you to go to Pokestops, you might have more chance of finding people in person to do Giratina raids, so a decent opportunity to get some raids in. And if you do go out looking for some raids, remember to have your Galarian your mask set as your buddy so you can capitalize on the raids done for the evolution requirement. And when it comes to max battles, max score bunny will be available, and max Cinderace with fire spin and flamethrower isn't quite as good as max charge 
Charizard with Fire Spin and Blast Burn, but it is better than Max Charizard with Fire Spin and Overheat, so it is worth picking this one up. However, unlike Max Cinderace, Max Charizard does have access to Flying and Dragon type fast moves as well, so it can use Flying and Dragon type max moves. And outside of max battles, Cinderace doesn't have as much meta relevance as Charizard because Charizard does have access to two Megas and the Y Mega form is the second best fire type attacker in the game. Cinderace however in the future will get access to Blast Burn, Pyro Ball and a Shadow Form which will improve its performance outside of max battles. When it comes to max Rillaboom I would recommend getting it over max Venusaur because it will deal more damage with its moveset Razor Leaf and Grass Knot. Outside of max battles Rillaboom is the 10th best grass type attacker but it will improve when it gets access to Frenzy Plant, Drum Beating and a Shadow Form. For Sobble and Max Inteleon, I would recommend having and investing in Max Inteleon over Max Blastoise because it can do quite a bit more water type damage. Outside of Max Battles, Inteleon is the 23rd best water type attacker and its performance will be improving in the future when it gets access to Hydro Cannon, Snipe Shot and a Shadow Form. It's worth noting that getting these Gala starters in their max forms and powering them up will be really useful counters when Gigantamax Charizard, Blastoise and Venusaur arrive later on in the month. And also eventually these Gala starters will have their Gigantamax form releasing as well so getting candy for them now to power them up and power up their max moves will be really useful and max phalanx is the only pokemon currently that has access to the same type attack bonus for max knuckle so worth picking it up for that outside of this niche in max battles phalanx doesn't have any meta relevance and with that said you will want some candy to power up the pokemon you decide to focus on you can always use pinat berries to boost your candy gains and you can mega evolve a pokemon that's the same type as the pokemon you're catching to increase the amount of candy candy exile and xp you get per catch. And if you want maximum coverage for the event, I would recommend Mega Evolving Sableye if you have it, because being a Ghost and Dark type, it will be able to boost candy gains for both your Mask, Duskull and Galarian Zigzagoon. If you don't have access to Mega Sableye, it will be available at the time of this event to raid, and it only takes 100 Mega Energy to Mega Evolve for the first time, so you only have to do one Mega Raid for this. And if you can't get Mega Sableye, you could Mega Evolve another Ghost type without the Dark typing that will boost candy gains for both your Mask and Duskull. So for these, you can Mega Evolve Gengar or Burnett. Alternatively, you could Mega Evolve a ground type like Steelix, Swampert, Garchomp or Revert Groudon so you can get a candy boost for Galarian, your mask and Cubone. And remember, Mega Evolving a Pokemon that is at the max Mega level will get you more candy, XP and chance for Candy XL. You could also trade to boost your candy gains because trading this season will get you one additional candy and a guaranteed Candy XL, so well worth trading or even mirror trading any Pokemon you want extra candy for rather than just transferring them. And whilst there aren't any specific bonuses to increase Stardust or XP gains during this event, I do want to mention that leveling up Friendship is a great way to get XP this season because you will be getting increased XP for it. For example, getting to best friends will normally get you 200k XP with a Lucky Egg active, and this season will get you 300k XP instead. So well worth opening and sending as many gifts as possible to level up your friendship with multiple trainers at the same time. And when leveling up, you will need a certain number of Platinum medals to progress, and here are some that are most worth going after during this event in particular. With both your mask having a ghost type and Galarian your mask having a ground type as well, this event will be a good chance to work on your Hex Maniac and Ruin Maniac Platinum Medals. And with both your mask being from field research during this event, it's a good chance to work on your Pokemon Ranger Platinum Medal. Trading is very much worth doing this season with the extra candy and candy XL it gives, and this will help you with your Gentleman and Pilot Platinum Medals. It's worth leveling up Friendship for the extra XP this season, so the Idol Platinum Medal will be a good target to go after. And with that said, if you did enjoy this video, then I recommend checking out these videos on the screen now and I'll catch you in the next one.